vibration. And that allows you to experience that vibration in its totality as you're working through. Now, your blueprint includes all of the filters, all of the belief structures from these other lifetimes that you've already had that you're carrying over. I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, I'm dependent on others for my survival. I am... Uh, I'm persecuted. I can't be myself because if I'm myself, then others will judge me. There are all kinds, all these filters, all these beliefs that you want to clear from these other lifetimes. So you set all those beliefs up uh, as part of your blueprint. In this particular life, you're going to want to focus on it. And then you make contracts with your friends and you say, all right, I'm going to go down and I want to work on abandonment. And, you know, you talk to your best friend and you say, you know, we played this, this scenario out in 10 lies and we still haven't gotten it. We haven't been able to let go of all of our judgment around it and to see that I'm not really abandoned, that it's just an illusion, that I'm always connected. So maybe if we try it uh, this time with you in a male body and you as my friend uh, and if we create this kind of scenario where we have an argument about, you know, I'm not feeling supported and you are not there for me, that I feel abandoned, then maybe we can work through it this time. Or you say, um, you know, maybe I can work on that with this person and, you know, they're my parent. My parents are divorced and then, you know, I'm going to feel abandoned by one of them. So I set up the scenario. This is what you do in the blueprints. So your friends agree. Even the times that you have really challenging situations where you think you may be a quote-unquote victim, it is the beings that love you the most that agree to play those roles. We're going to say that again. It's the beings who love you the most who often you create the most traumatic situations with. They'll say to you, all right, uh, you know, I know you, you want to play this victim role. I'm really not thrilled about playing the persecutor. I've kind of done it, but I love you and I know you want to have this experience and I'm going to have to work through it karmically, energetically, but I'll do it for you. And so they do. Sometimes, if you have not been to this planet a lot, um, the call came out that other beings in other star systems w were requested to incarnate to Earth to bring in some fresh energy these lifetimes that you've had in other systems, the knowledge and wisdom that you gained, you are bringing in because it's in your energetic field and you can tap into those records at any time. But you haven't been in such a dense body very often. So what you will do is create an imprint or an overlay. And imprints and overlays from this dimension are no different than a past life that you yourself have stepped into and had the experience of. Another way you can think of it is is like you downloading a program on how something is done or a how-to book that you've absorbed and you just take it on as it's your own. I had this experience and I learned about abandonment in this lifetime or I experienced abandonment in this lifetime or I experienced how to integrate abandonment in this lifetime. So what you'll do is you will find a record of another being who has perhaps integrated that issue. They've learned how to work through it and you will overlay it as one of your own lifetimes, all right? So you'll say, I'm going to go down to Earth, and I want to work on all these different issues, so um, I'm going to take this knowledge and this knowledge and this knowledge, and all these records are going to be the active records in the field. The rest are archived. You can think of them as dormant. They're not going to be ones that are actively running that you're going to tap into. Does that make sense to everyone? Do you all understand that? So... The overlays of the imprints from your vantage point are no different than any other lifetime that you've had. They're identical. These experiences feel like they are yours 100%. And you can't tell the difference. And it really doesn't matter because this reality is an illusion anyway. All of those lifetimes, in a sense, are illusions. So whether it's yours or someone else's, because we are all connected. We all share experience and records. We all watch and review each other's records so that we have a greater understanding of experience, of source energy, everything that source is experiencing because we are source energy. So it makes no difference whether it's yours or not. Now those who are walk-ins, 
those who were not the original person who incarnated the body when the when the body was born uh, they will take on and they contract beforehand the imprint of the being who was in the physical vehicle before they walk in usually there's a dramatic event some sort of near-death experience not always but quite often because it just makes the transition a bit easier because the original soul disengages from the body it's a it's a little easier especially if you're talking uh, you're talking about someone who has been through incarnational cycles and been through the death cycle they 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 know when it's time to extract and they're familiar with that sensation so a lot of times they will contract to do it during near death uh, with a walk-in it doesn't matter for all intensive purposes that person that was in the body everything that happened in that lifetime is your lifetime just as if you lived it yourself you take it on energetically karmically if you will karma is not what you all think it is it's been uh, so altered your perception of it it's been used to control and manipulate that you don't start at the bottom and work your way up all right you've been told if you don't behave you're gonna come back as an ant or you're gonna you know you're gonna have to come back and live a life of suffering you don't have to do any of that but you as a soul say you know I want to work this through it's no fun to have someone put the last piece in the puzzle I want to be able to start and finish it so you'll come back and have an experience but you are never forced to you're not condemned to do anything you have free will and most of us because you know we all know that this is an illusion we want to come back now occasionally you've got some beings who haven't been here before they'll step in and say no thank you uh, you know I thought this might be okay but I'm not interested and they will walk out and someone will usually walk in because you've got a perfectly good body a perfectly good bl blueprint and there are a lot of beings who want to be here so they will take it over I do have a question about the walk-ins um, someone once told me that I was a walk-in I did have a dramatic experience at one time and what I noticed is my eyes changed to the point where I looked in the mirror I scared myself because I didn't recognize the, the energy or the, the way my eyes looked so what I'm wondering is is it's another aspect of yourself that is moving in from a different uh, dimension or frequency or not always the way that you think of an aspect of yourself um, you know at the end of the day we're all aspects of each other mm -hmm. but as you are defining it down on this planet you know it's not part of your higher consciousness or your oversoul all right it can be but it may be another part or another being altogether who is not in your your collective that you've created um, I'm trying to see if we can break this down for you if you think of source and then source branches off the upper levels of source are where the oversoul resides it's a higher version of yourself that that has uh, more beings if you will underneath it all right and each one of these fractures off again and then you've got your higher consciousness which is uh, kind of the the mid-level that is overseeing uh, all these incarnations in these physical aspects of yourself so it is possible that it's part of your oversoul but not part of your higher consciousness because they're different levels and different branches um, so when uh, somebody walks in it doesn't matter it can be it doesn't have to be uh, they take on all your memories all your yes. feelings all your thoughts nothing like that changed so I just noticed my eyes and and it can be it doesn't have to be dramatic it doesn't it depends on the souls and the personalities of the souls and, and what the programming is and what they want to create and generate they don't they may not need to create a completely they may not have a, an agenda that is completely different than the original inhabitant all right so they're not going to feel that it, the life is completely split some walk-ins do have that sensation that there is a split that was completely something different my taste my desires all those are very different and they move forward that way is that what a parallel universe is? not exactly it can be it can feel that way that you choose a different timeline where where the agreed upon set of circumstances are vastly different but the walk-in experience your desire in your um, your likes and what you want to create from this point forward they can be similar or they can be drastically different 
all right? And, and you're going to choose a body uh, on situations um, that is still going to set you up. So if the first person had all these issues, you've got to be in agreement that either you're going to get in and you're going to integrate this right away and move on to a new set, or you're going to continue working on those very issues. It's, it, there's so many variations here. We can't just give you one answer. There, there's, you think about infinite possibilities. But we're just trying to give you a couple scenarios and the most common scenarios. Um, Walk-ins are far, far more common than you all think. We would say about um, 15 to 20% of your population is walk-in. But most of the lifetimes are so similar that it's not dramatic and it's not required that the original soul uh, or the second soul knows that's who they are. All right, because for all intents and purposes, it is the same. Some souls want to know and they want to remember that they are a, you know, they've got lifetimes in stellar, other stellar regions, and they want to pull that information in so they hold it. They're not going through the indoctrination of childhood. They don't need to have that childhood experience. They just want the vehicle, and they want to be here at this particular time. So that's not required. Um and they want to hold that, that new memory. So they will do that rather than uh, going down in density and projecting a body because that's also an option, all right? Creating a body, generating a body for yourself as you're lowering yourself. You don't have to be born into the physical world. Everybody take a nice deep breath. Uh, you've, you've had beings on this planet who've generated a body for themselves, all right? Whether you're calling them masters or ascended beings who've descended, it is possible and it happens all the time. Uh, but most of you want to understand the mindset, you want to understand the game that mass consciousness is playing and so you'll plug in some way to that experience. So does that help? I have a question about the game plan here in the next three years. Uh, um, when you say activation and transformation um, and increasing our frequency, I think it's in there. Mm. Uh, would we be less likely to play the game the same way we've been playing for the last yes. 3,000 years? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, because your perception changes. So it's impossible for the game not to change if your perception is different. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as we said, this is a game of descension and reascension. Now, there are some beings who are not interested in going into the higher realms. Part of the ascension timeline or the process for that is that, you know, there's a, a fourth dimensional version and there's a fifth dimensional version, and you can choose which vibrational timeline you put yourself on. And the records for those and the experiences of those are going to be different. So if you are... not wanting to go. Your blueprint probably looks something like, I just want to work on these issues. Uh, I probably am not going to wake up too much and I'm going to go through the death cycle and then I'm going to go on and incarnate to a planet that has a similar paradigm to this one. There are some who knew full well they wanted to go into the higher realms and so they're working on it to see if they can make it happen. And then some who said, well, we'll see where we go. It would be nice, but we'll see where we go. So based on your vibration, you're going to determine which string or which dot of reality you are on. Now, you may be on one that has a, that agreed upon set of circumstances and they can overlap with the third dimensional and the fourth, the fourth dimensional version. But you're going to be in different vibrational ranges. So some of the data or information that you take on as reality will be similar to those in density and some of it is going to be completely different. It's not required in order to be on that string and have that agreed upon set of circumstances. So you can be experiencing something very different than person over here who's vibrating at the lower range, all right? And you're vibrating at a higher range. Now, when those ranges get pretty dramatic, those who, those who are at the very top and those who are at the very bottom, those at the bottom may not see those at the top because you can see down in dimensional range, in frequency, but you can't see up, all right? We can look down at you, but unless you increase your vibration, you're not seeing us, all right? So these timelines of the future are also splitting, 
all right? These versions of reality are going to split in, in the core of what's going to happen, the agreed upon set of circumstances. So if you want to go into the higher realms, you are going to vibrate and put yourself on the string where that's happening. If you don't, you're going to put yourself on another version. Because you're experiencing it still from a linear perspective, you're not going to realize that you're on another string. You're just going to feel if you're in the higher ones that people are getting it. More and more people are waking up. Yes, there's still a few that might be asleep in your version of reality because that's the experience that they wanted to have, being on the planet with people who are already awakened and how that impacts them. But you're not going to know necessarily about this other string unless you raise your vibration and you're looking into the Akashic realms. You're looking into the wreckage. You're looking at other timelines and different versions and different levels of information. So do other dimensional realities, maybe like where you're from, or do they have to go through these, it feels to me like harsh challenges. I mean, are they just as dense? You know, we're talking about no. or torture or no. it just seems so 3D or well, this is the most challenging dimension to live in, to experience, because you, and especially on this planet, because this planet is unlike any other in your system, all right? Because Earth is a grand experiment, and it has genetic material from thousands of worlds. So along with that, you've got all these records. You've got all of these experiences, all of these emotions. So you've got a wide range of emotion. And part of why it's a grand experiment is because you have these other planets and they don't have as much uh, range to them. They don't have the genetic material that you've got here. So their pool to pull from for experience and variation is smaller. So all these worlds sent representatives to Earth to try and play out these dramas in, on a, in a smaller pool, if you will. Because they thought, well, maybe we can work it out. You can create the drama with your neighbor and see if you can, if you can, you know, work that out as opposed to seeing your neighbor as, you know, uh, your enemy who blew up your country. You've forgotten that that's the dynamic. So you try and play it out with your, you know, moving a fence back and forth with your neighbor where it's not as intense. Does that make sense? And you've got this huge emotional range which means you have extremely high highs. You've got variations of love, which really, it's, it's very rare. All the different kinds of love that you have. Most other sectors of space experience unconditional love, and that's it. But you get variations, the love you have for a child, the love you have for a mate, the uh, love you have for a parent, the love you have for a best friend, an acquaintance, an enemy. Uh, how you can even have love for an enemy. There are all these variations, and it makes it incredibly unique. And you all get very excited when you think about getting to go to Earth. It's the golden ticket, all right? It's the game that everybody in town wants to play. And if you think that there are, you know, six billion of you on the planet, there are five times that of beings who are just sitting and observing on a daily basis. So there are a lot of people who are watching because they want to know what's going on because as you are learning how to integrate, how you're learning how to deal with all these issues, these things that are really hard and challenging, you're sending that information off to another part of the library. And they can go and take that book off the shelf and read, all right, integration for abandonment. This is how it was done. This is how this person did it. All right, well, maybe I can try that and we'll see if now that person who blew up my country, I can work it out with. I can forgive him even though 10 million people died. All right, because you learned how to do it with your neighbor. And this is the holographic nature of the universe. And this is why what's happening on this planet is so important and why so many beings are watching because you are writing the records, putting it into the library that everybody else gets to access from. It's pretty powerful. And right now, you don't have that level of awareness about you and what you're necessarily doing. But as you start to access the Akashic Realms, as you start to access more and more of your records and understand the game that's really being played, uh, it will help you to expand to see that you are connected in ways that you never, ever dreamed of and that the possibilities for you to be creative, 
for you to be experimental, for you to take chance because you'll see that this is just an illusion. It's a, it's a personality, it's a role that you've donned to have a lifetime. When you start looking at all the other lifetimes, uh, it's not that you're going to feel that this is disposable, but you're going to understand that you know your, your imagination of life and death is very different. You are an immortal being who's projected itself in here and you are never dying. So you make the most of the moments that you have because you know that death is an illusion. You go for it. It will change your perspective of reality that way. So yes, this is a challenging planet to be on. Um, and that's why there are also so many who are assisting because we know how tough it is. And we want to help you. We want to be of support. The librarians are there to support you, to help you to find the records that you want as well. I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you're uh, channeling and you channel and the ma some of the masters come through, are they actually working with your Akashic record or is it better to go bypass them and go straight to your Akashic record? It depends on what you want. Because remember, your ascended master or your guide has their own set of filters. Mm -hmm. So they're giving you a version. Uh, remember, okay, so what dimension are they getting the information from? And then that's passing through their filter, and then they're giving it to you, which is passing through your filter. All right, so there are a lot of filters involved there. You can bypass them. You are your own best source of information. So if you want the clearest version um, that's going through the least amount of filters, then it goes from you into the records. But if you're having a hard time getting there, ask for help, ask for assistance. Uh, the librarians don't have the filtering system that some of the guides do. All right, their sole purpose is to bring you unfiltered information. Uh, they have some filters that are set up because of the dimension that they're in, but they don't have the same kind of life experience filters that um, the Ascended Masters have. We have, you know, we are, we are not without our own filters. We have a perception of reality. It is not the only perception of reality, and that's why we always say to you, take what resonates and leave the rest behind. You are source energy. You can go up and you can get the unabridged version of the information. But sometimes, as we said, doing that will, will spoil the fun. So you'll go to another level or another layer. There's no right or wrong answer here. A question about the dimensions. Um, are most of us here on this planet in the third dimension and some and experiencing the fourth dimension while we're here? And when we die, which dimension do we go into and what's the difference? That's a big question. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So those of you who are going through this increase in vibration, you are uh, in the third and fourth. Most of you are going back and forth right now. You're not maintaining a fourth dimensional level of consciousness. You slip in and out. All right? Sometimes you have an expanded awareness. You're feeling a little lighter. You're feeling a little uh, more joy in your life. And those are the times where you're vibrating at a higher range and you're, you're slipping into the fourth dimension and then you'll drop back out. Mm -hmm. All right? When you die... Um, it's all going on at once. So you choose a set of circumstances that you want. Let's say you want to work on uh, subjugation and that you want to look at gender, the difference in gender, the separation in gender and everything that goes about around it. So you can choose to do that in the 20th century, 21st century, or you can go back and look at it, say, in the 1700s. Perhaps that's where there is a greater difference in the sexes and your roles. So you choose a vibration that sets that up for yourself. It's not that you've got to start at, you know, um, 100,000 years ago and work forward, all right? It's all concurrent. So you're finding a vibrational range and a set of circumstances, and then you project yourself there. So it's not a linear progression. You're still thinking about it from a linear perspective. So you can project yourself anywhere in time and have an experience uh, as a soul and it's not like you're starting at the beginning now there are some things that yes if you're new to a particular game you're probably going to go and have uh, your first experiences are going to be rather simple ones because you know uh, you're probably not going to start, start with the most complex thing are you forced to no you could try for the the more complex thing and see how it goes you can go for it 
but you're probably going to find at the soul level you're going to be a little more logical and say, all right, well, let's try it this way first and see how that goes. Or you might try the more complex thing and say, all right, that's not working, so why don't I also project myself down here and see if I can work on it in a more simple way and then see how that works with the records over here and this version of me that's having this experience that's more, a little more complicated. All right? So you don't have to go to a particular area or do things in a particular order. You go where you, you feel like you want to go next as a soul because you are experiencing reality in multiple dimensions at once. Again, you're not starting down at the third and working up. You're already source. You're already at the top. So there's no, no need to start at the bottom. You can if you want. And you, most of you play in uh, a particular range. Dimensions are usually coupled together with kind of uh, rules and then sub-rules. So 3 through 6 tend to go together. 7 through 9, 10 through 12, and then the connection of the all at source. So would 3 to 6 be more in the density of the physical realm? Yes. And then 6 to 9, would that be more in the spiritual or in the, I don't know what to call it? Uh, yes, you've got density in uh, up to the 6th dimension. There's usually some sort of denser form, and then you're, you're transiting form out of that into vehicles of light. Uh, and 3rd has a really dense body and then fourth it's it's a lighter version and so on and so forth but there's a transition so there's some some common themes that run through those those uh vehicles and that's why your fields are in levels and layers as well mm-hmm. where you're storing the information but most of it gets lumped together and there are far more levels within your energetic field than we talk about uh, we, we try not to make the distinction between them. Uh, you know, everybody's got a dis- different system. Um, from your third dimensional perspective, your comprehension of it, you, you just can't look at it. You can't get there. You're actually activating a new level in your energetic field. You can call it your vibrational body. It is the new template for your new vehicle. So you're not going to operate the vehicle out of the same template. You're creating a brand new template. So there's a new level and layer for you all to access. Where does healing begin? What uh, vibrational realm? For this body? body, Which realm? Um, It starts in a shift in the energetic template in that level or layer for for the three through six, uh, through that, um, that version of your energetic template. That's where all those records are stored and that's usually where you're making the shift in perspective in order to shift uh, the energetic template to shift the physical vehicle because everything starts at the energetic level. You can change things in the physical body, you can cut things out, but unless you change the template, it's going to come right back. And that's three through six? Yes. Yes. Also depends, you know, usually the lifetimes that are overlapping and, you know, you've, you've played in, in this star system or that star system, it, you are, it can be in different dimensions. It doesn't have to be within the third dimension. You can have a sixth dimensional lifetime and still have an issue of abandonment, all right? It's going to be slightly different. It's not going to be as dense. You still have duality, but as you go up in vibration, as you go up in dimensions, the extremes of duality are not as far apart so here you've got black and white which are miles apart and everything in between where we're at we've got uh, you know if you want to think about it is gray and light gray those are our, our extremes all right so they're not as far apart so we don't experience duality in the same way what dimension are you in ninth, ninth? yes i have a question about this um because i other, there have been wars on other planets. Yes. And star systems have blown one another up and beings have attacked other planets. Where does that fit in in terms of polarity and density? And w- weren't those experiments in integration too? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because that's, that is the grand game, uh-huh. is integration. This is duality, so you're trying how to integrate, especially down here on this planet when you're really, really dense. There are other universes which have a completely different set of rules and regulations. 
in the multiverses, each one is slightly different, more gains to be had. There's, you know, if you want to think of it, uh, to give you an example and way to think about it, what's a, what's a trinary system like? We've got three polarities. We've got three things that are pulling energies. You're so ingrained in duality that it's hard to even comprehend that. What, was that, what would that be like? But yes, um, there are still different experiences. Most of them aren't quite as violent as what you have on this planet. Uh, they're not quite as extreme. But yes, they still go on and things won't quite work through. Uh, and so, as we said, many of you sent representatives to Earth for, who are from those systems. And you leave your body at night and you're working with those beings. You're working with the records. You're working with uh, giving them information, putting information out there for them, lecturing them on what's going on because they watch the event, but they're not having the experience. So you're giving them all the subtext. They'll say, well, why didn't you just make that change in your body? Why did you, know, why did you hold on to fear? And you say, well, in that moment... Uh, I was gripped with this emotion and I had this experience and they say, ah, all right, now I understand. But they're just watching and observing like a movie and then it's like you're the, the actor giving all the subtext of why you made that choice. So this goes on quite a bit more than you would even begin to imagine. Did you say that the Pleiadians were in the ninth dimension? We are, but there are other Pleiadians. And who are there higher dimensions beyond that? Well, the way that we break up the dimensional structure is in 12 dimensions, the 12 combine to form a 13th, which is source energy. It's all things. Um, there are others who will give you more dimensional numbers, but what they're breaking it out into are octaves. The you know dimensions are structured like music with octaves, different breaks, if you will, and some will break it up so you've got 144 dimensions, but we're just giving it to you as 12. And do you stay Pleiadian? Well, there are others of it, you know, other aspects of ourselves which are incarnating in different systems. Wendy is part of the 2500 Collective, and she's down on Earth. You will find that the beings that you work with, you are usually part of their collective, and you will go to different dimensions, and you will be from different star systems. None of you is from Earth. Earth is not really anyone's home. Most of you have been in other star systems and played games in, in other, other realms. I have a question on... You mentioned being here now as a golden ticket. Yes. And then you mentioned that, you know, we're working through abandonment and other issues in helping others. Why is it that higher vibrational beings are interested in lower vibrational things like abandonment? Because it's a fascinating game. It is so unlike connection to source energy. It is so different and so unique than being connected. In all the other dimensions... You have a multi-dimensional perspective. You know that you are always connected to source. You know that you are a part of all things. So to have an experience that you think that you are an individual and you are completely separate, it is so unique and different from the norm that it's a fascinating experience to have. If you're here and you don't believe that you're not uh, disconnected from source, what is, what is that saying? Um, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe yes. it's not connected to source. Uh, so it means that you are starting to reconnect. You're, you're removing some of the filters that are keeping you from acknowledging the fact that you're always connected. If you think about it as a, magi a magician who's sawing someone in half and the illusion is there that he pulls the pieces apart, mm -hmm. but in reality that person in the box is, is always connected. That's how it is with you and source energy. You are always connected, but you've got all these filters in the way that say, oh, I'm separate, I'm, I'm not connected to anything. They're not real, those filters, those illusions. So you're removing more and more of your filters to see that, yes, indeed, you are connected. And you're letting go of more and more of your fears. Yes? Question. Yes? Um, are you part of the Galactic Federation, and are you going to be part of the contact? Um, we have members who are part of the Galactic Federation, yes. Um, Do you have any information on the contact? About yes, uh, we do. We don't want to go too far off here, but um, let's just say this. Uh, beings who are in the higher vibrations want to support you. If we were all to just appear, there is too much fear on this planet and it would create more trauma than it would uh, increase your vibration. 
So beings who want to be of service are going to wait until you raise your vibration and are capable on your own of viewing. Some of you have reached a level where you're seeing things already. And it may be a large number in some cities, but for your governments to parade uh, uh, extraterrestrial beings out, there's usually an agenda there, and you want to ask what the agenda is. Um, so we're not really going to appear to you until you're ready, and we'll do that more at an individual basis because the Galactic Federation is not going to show up. Uh, there, you know, our general stance is that it is not in your best interest for us just to show up prior to your readiness and you're seeking us out. Could I ask what the Galactic Federation is? Uh, there are about 52 species in the Galactic Federation. It is an organization, if you will, of beings who are like-minded in their agenda. Uh, it was originally established to monitor time and time jumping and the alteration of timelines to the detriment of that time. You can alter a timeline and bring in a vibration that can interfere with the entire timeline and destroy it. So that there were beings who were playing around with the illusion of time, who were interacting and moving with timelines, and so that's what the, why the Federation was originally established. Has this experiment, I mean, is there a sense of, well, I know there's no judgment, but have we failed? <laughs> there are timelines in which you will fail. But I mean, the, as a whole, this whole experiment of Earth, because uh, uh, we're shifting into uh, another space, so are we, are we done? Are we to be done? Because uh, we've not really Earth, gone too far? Earth will, from our perspective, as we look at the majority of the timelines and how you will experience them, Earth will remove her energy from the third dimension. She's done everything that she wanted to do. She's had all experiences that she wanted to have, just as a soul, uh, you know, a planet is a collective of beings who are holding a resonance as a planet. And so they've done everything that they want to do. And so they are increasing their frequency to play a new game because, frankly, they're bored. They've done it all. So this time, the planet is going through the ascension process with conscious beings on it, which has never happened before, where the two have gone together. You've had one or the other. So it's a bit of an unknown factor. That's why we, we can tell you we don't know exactly how it's going to play out, which version of reality, which timeline are we going to give you, which record are we going to pull out and tell you is going to happen. Because you have so many major choices that are coming at this end, all right, because you've got all this support from the universe. You're bathed in photonic energy, really high vibrational energy right now. So when you're bathed in high frequencies, anything unlike it gets activated. So in other words, all your fears, all your worries, all your stresses, all your doubts, all those get activated and you start projecting them so that you can observe them and integrate them. That's how it works itself out. So the timelines that you're on and that we're communicating with you, we are supporting you in a version of you that is succeeding. Now, how exactly you succeed and how you continue to move forward we're not certain so we'll go to another timeline where you're on it where you're succeeding and you're having another issue uh, this we know this gets a lot for you all to think about because you you're still thinking in a linear way the normal way that you all are so accustomed to is a multi-dimensional reality linear seems very limited it seems very confining and it is a natural way of being to be multidimensional. And as soon as you step into that frequency, you say, ah, oh, yes, here I am again. All right, it's going to seem normal. It's going to seem the most organic way of being. All right, where this is a bit more contrived down here. So we're working with multiple versions of you right now. We're working with different versions on different timelines. We're sitting here having this very same conversation with multiple versions of you. Take a deep breath. <laughs> and we spent a lot of time talking about this today because it's really important when you start getting into the records that you understand this. So that when you get a record, it does not mean that that is the only record. You can go back and get a different version. You can go back and get the version that has the vibration that you want. And again, there is no absolute truth. Now, you can look at a version of the future 
that has an agreed upon set of circumstances that are in alignment with the now that you are experiencing. All right, so the now that you have becomes the past set of circumstances for what you perceive to be your future. Are you all getting that? Mm -hmm. So we heard one, uh huh. So we want to make sure this, this is a lot to take in. So all you've got are all these nows with agreed upon past. So one of the nows that you're experiencing becomes another version of the past. All right, so what, you, what would be your future becomes another version of the now with your now as a past. So you can pick and choose which bits of information that you want, which versions of the record are you accessing, which timeline of the record are you accessing. We know it seems like a lot right now because you're still trapped in the linear mind, but as soon as you put it into the heart center, the heart center understands what to do with it. You know how to process it because that is the normal, natural way of being and operating in all dimensions because you are source energy. And as we said, accessing the records is not difficult. The hard part is for all of you to get out of your own way and trust what you're getting. Now, you also want to ask for confirmation. All right, this is what I think about the past, or this is what I think is going to happen in the future. This is what I got out of this record. Ask for confirmation. We will make sure we get it to you. You'll, you may see repeated patterns and numbers. You can set it up to say, all right, um, if, uh, you know, this is the truth, and I'm going to look at the clock three times today, and I'm going to see, you know, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 whatever. You see repeated patterns. Or... Um, you know, if this is true, then bring somebody across my path who uh, is going to say the very same information or something pretty close that I'm not going to miss, all right? Or just ask your guides in general for confirmation all right, until you get it or you no longer want it. And you can do this with all things. When you ask, we can give it to you. So you've got to ask. Be sure to ask for it. And after a while, as we said, you begin to trust what you're getting because it feels different and you... Um, when you have an, uh, an experience where you know that you are connecting with a record, you feel it, it feels different, bookmark it in your body. Tell your body to remember this frequency, this signature. And you can, when you sit down to access the records again, tell your body, I want to go back to this vibrational state that I had before. I want to go back to that bookmark. And your body knows exactly where to go. You can find the frequency much, much easier. So once you get there, it's much easier to go back. You know the path, you know the way, you know the directions. And you can go right back. The more you go, the easier it is to get there. You don't even think about it, you're just there. All right. Start with opening up the heart, set the intent. Find that place that's serene. Find that place that's beautiful to you, that opens your heart. It doesn't matter where it is. It can be a white library, it can be a mountaintop, it can be uh, you know, it can be a park, it can be a forest, it can be the ocean, you can be sitting on the sand. You know, the library can come out of the water, however you want to envision it. It's entirely up to you. You're just using the mind and the vision as a tool. Does that feel easy enough for everyone? Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the versions of me that um, aren't succeeding, that are you know, in other realities. Is there a way that we can gather them so that they all are with us and integrated and succeed? All of your power exists in the now, in this version of you that is in this timeline. And this is the most important one for you to play with, to experience, and to um, align with. And that is you, this version of you that's here having this discussion with us. It doesn't really matter what's going on in past lives. If you have something you want to integrate, you're going to create it in the now. It's as simple as that. And that's why we tell you, you don't really have to know all the ins and outs of these past lives. Just deal with your own life. Is that because of the hologram? Yes, precisely. Um, when you access a past life and a memory of a past life, you do so for one of two reasons. You are remembering either a situation which has the same vibration of what you've created in the now, and it's just giving you another perspective of that same frequency. All right, but you still deal with it in the now. You can't go and deal with that past life. You've got to deal with the now because that's where your focus is on this timeline. Think of it as a, a spotlight, all right? And your energy is focused very, very intently 
on that one string. This is you focused in your body, experiencing letting your time. Remember all these other strings that are right beside it. When you drift off and you're thinking about the past, you know, oh, I wish yesterday I hadn't said that to that person or I wish I would have, you know, made that phone call or I wish I would have done this. Your energy, this spotlight is now diffused and there's energy that's drifting off onto this other timeline where that is the now. Or if you're projecting too far into the future, worrying about how it's going to play out, you're not paying any attention to what's going on now. There is part of you that should be coming down on the string that's now thinking about another timeline that's out here. But all of your power exists in the now. So you want to bring all that focus back to what you are experiencing in this moment, whether you're doing the dishes or you are having a conversation with a friend or you are um, breathing. Perhaps you're doing yoga or meditation. You just want to be present and see how you feel about that activity that you're doing. So... With the past life, you're either accessing another version so you can see it in a broader scope, or there may be information, a skill set that you are trying to bring through that you want to remember and you want to, you want to utilize in the now. Perhaps you want to remember working with tone and sound, so you're going back and looking at a record where you were proficient at it, perhaps in Egypt, Lemuria, Atlantis. All those civilizations utilize tone and sound. So perhaps you have a record, or perhaps you don't. Perhaps you did not live in that lifetime. So you are going to go to the library and basically what you do is you create an imprint or an overlay for your blueprint. You go and you get the information. You say, how did one work with sound? And you get the information and say, ah, this is how it was done. Perhaps that's not your lifetime that you accessed. But it doesn't matter. For all intents and purposes, it may as well be your own. And you can bring that information about how to apply it to the now through this life. And then you get to play with it, you get to practice it, and experience it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. Could you explain a little more about the template? Do we create those? Do we bring them with us? Do we use it both? You create them. Usually there is a council that you work with to strategize uh, what the best way is to have the experience that you want to have. You know, it's like talking to your friends and telling them you want to try something new. And one friend says, oh, why don't you try that? That would be fun. Or, oh, I've done that. It's, pro it's really hard to do that way. Why don't you try doing it this way? So you work with groups. There are councils and collectives, if you want to call them the Lords of Karma. That's also a name for them. There are lots of names for them. Um, you all like names and labels down here on the planet, and there are lots of names and labels that you give them all. But you create all of that before you incarnate so that you can have the kinds of experiences that you want to have. Now, you also have free will. There are some sectors where you don't have free will. You p create a blueprint, you go down, you live that life exactly as it's blueprinted, and um, that's it. You have free will here. So you create the blueprint, and then you can rework the contracts. You say, you know, this really isn't working for me, so I'm going to rework it. Sometimes you will go, and you'll go into the libraries, and, and you will imprint a different lifetime, or you will imprint uh, a new experience and set yourself up and go uh, back in your body then uh, in the morning and, and you'll go and live life with a slightly different program. And it's that easy. It is that easy. It's not difficult at all. You are creator beings. You know, it's not like God says, hey, do this, and you have to go and do it. You are 100% in the driver's seat about what you want your life to be like. And this is what you're all remembering, that you are creator beings. And you get to play around and set it up however you want. It's time you will start fantasizing about the world that you want to live in. Without Why does that seem so hard to actually manifest? I think people get that concept that uh, they're in the control seat, they get to choose what they want, they think about it, but it doesn't quite materialize either quick enough or, I don't know, it just... Well, here's the thing. You are constantly manifesting. Constantly. Now, it may not be what you expect it to be. You've got expectations about, I want to create this. Well, sometimes what you're expecting to create is a very, very high vibration. You have to be in vibrational alignment. So if what you are asking for is a high vibration, you've got to be in that vibration to get it. 
the analogy we use is that it's like climbing to the top of a building on the roof. You throw your boomerang out, that's your order to the universe, and you've still got to be standing on the rooftop when the order comes back. But sometimes what will happen is you'll say, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm not deserving, or, you know, it's been two weeks, it's not showing up, or it's been two hours, it's not showing up. And you drop out of that vibrational range because you've, you've tapped into fear. So now the universe brings back the order, but you're no longer in that vibrational range to receive it. Same thing happens with, with just the other way. You can be in fear and doubt and pulsing out all of this fear. And so the universe is all right, you're pulsing out fear, so I'm going to match that vibration. But you raise your vibration before you see it in your physical reality. So when that accident or that chaos comes back to you, that drama comes back, you're no longer in that range. So you have not experienced it either. Sometimes what you're asking for is a really big leap, all right, and you can't maintain that. So the universe says, all right, I'm going to bring you what you need in order to clear so that you can have what you're asking me for. We've got to get you up to the, to the rooftop so you've got, you know, two more flights of stairs, so to speak, to, to clear. So what happens a lot of times is that people say, this is what I want to create, but they're not paying any attention to what's in front of them. They're still focused on this thing that's in the future. I want to create this. But they're not in the now. They're not seeing what's coming to them, what they are generating, what they're pulsing out. So they're not making vibrational adjustments to increase their frequency to receive what it is they've asked for that's of a high vibration. Do you all get that? Mm -hmm. So that is why we tell you to be present. That's where all your power is. That's how you make adjustments. That's how you recognize what you're pulsing out. That's how you make course corrections. There are no right or wrong choices here. They're just vibrational selections. And that's very different. Um, it affects you very different, differently as far as a vibrational standpoint goes because you think, you know, oh, I made a wrong choice. So look at the drama I've created again. And you beat yourselves up instead of saying, oh, look what I created again. And look what I recognize I created. How, how amazing is that? that you recognize that you created that and you can undo it just as easily as you do it. That's the other part here that you think that uh, aligning with the negative is easier than aligning with the positive. And it's not. Good things can happen. Big change can happen just as easily as you creating the same pattern. It's just a vibrational selection. And you being aware and present of what is in front of you to make those course corrections. Because when you think about, ugh, I did it again, I dropped out of the frequency, there's judgment there that somehow it's wrong for you to be in that lower frequency. No, it's not wrong. It's a selection. We don't judge it as wrong. We just judge it. We don't judge it at all. We, we just see it as a, a choice. And you're choosing to stay there. You can choose to come out of it as well. The natural flow of things is always towards integration. The natural flow is towards connection. Because that's who you are. That's your natural state of being. And then you put all these filters on top that say you're separate and everything else. But the natural flow of energy is always towards source. It's always towards love. I have a question about the Earth transformations. Um, a lot of talk about the planetary lineups and the, um, going into the next dimension, higher dimension of frequencies. Is there anything that suddenly might impact us to have to... Um, bring ourselves up to that higher level at a, at a quick pace? Well, yes. Uh, as you are moving through these sectors, each time you come through, uh, each, uh, you're moving deeper and deeper into this dense band. We, uh, think of it as a start and finish line on a track. Mm -hmm. All right? It's the end of a grand cycle. It's the beginning of a new cycle. And as you're getting deeper into uh, this white chalk line, if you want to think of it that way, you can think of it as white light, as really dense energy. You get deeper and deeper into it, the frequency gets higher and higher and higher. So as you go here, the planet herself, the whole solar system, is bathed in high vibrational energy, and it gets higher and higher and higher and more and more intense. That's why the last few years it felt more intense. And everything has a wave to it because we're in duality. Everything has an ebb and a flow. So you'll hit a peak of one of the waves, things will seem really intense, and then you'll get to integrate it. And things will lessen just a bit. And then you hit another wave, and it gets even more intense, and you'll get to integrate it. 
So you just hit one of the peaks at the end of February, and now you're on the downslide, so you're getting a chance to integrate, and then you're going to start right back up, and the next peak is going to come a lot faster this, each time. And each time you're going through more and more growth, so, uh, it's, and it's exponential, your growth. So you know, if you think about 10 years ago and what you went through 10 years ago, it would have been one or two lives in a year. Now you've got uh, hundreds and thousands of lives in the matter of a couple months that you've integrated that it would have taken you because of the sector of space that you were in and the natural cycle and rhythm it would have taken longer you didn't have as much support you weren't bathed in this high vibrational energy to activate you so you weren't seeing the reflection because also with this um, this increase in vibration the time it takes to see the reflection is shortened once you get into the other realms the manifestation is immediate so you're still working through attraction and things are being attracted back to you. And there's time involved. And as you get closer towards the, the quantum shift into the next dimension, it increases and increases and increases in intensity and in time that you experience is shorter. It changes also physically as far as our, um, the atoms, the DNA, our blood yes. system, yes. You know, what we pick up. Yes, because as you increase in vibration, it literally affects your body. Uh, you turn on and off the coating of your genetic material, which uh, as a result of that, it alters your chemical structure, it, it alters your hormonal systems, it, it alters everything. And you're also activating this new energetic template, all right, which creates the new version of your physical body. So the first thing is you're turning on and off the coating within your own body, all right? You've got a lot of people who are sick right now because they are still holding on to a lot of the lower frequencies in their energetic field and they're not dealing with it and things are manifest faster so you're seeing them get sick very quickly. But remember, just as simply as you can get sick, you can also clear it. All right? You can also remove it and integrate it. As far as healing goes, you can integrate immediately. It doesn't require time in order for you to heal your body. But if your belief says it does, then it's going to take time. But in reality, if you don't have that filter, it's instantaneous. It's your belief systems. Um, so are there big events that can um, leap you forward? Yes, you can create them as a collective. But again, it depends on your vibration and your selection of what version you're going to want to be on. So we can't really tell you it gets harder and harder for us to give you projections of the future because you've got so many major choices because you've got so much growth happening because of all this high vibrational energy which version which timeline are you going to stand on and, and how do we tell you what that future is if we don't know what choice you're going to make does majority rule in that case or most no people? majority majority does not rule it does not take a majority in order to create a new timeline it does not take very many of you uh, it, it takes a, a minority of you, but enough of you. How many is that? Um, it depends on what you want to create, whether you're creating a shift within an existing timeline, you want to create a shift for a community, or whether you want to create a planetary shift. Um, the percentage is, is rather low. Um, you know, you, you banter around numbers like 144,000. That's really uh, to create a planetary shift. That's that's about what it would take. It's a very small, small number of you. Do we have that many? Yes. Mm. And there are many timelines that have that potential on it. And there are a few that, you know, things aren't succeeding. Mm -hmm. All right? But if you're in alignment with the higher version, you're going to go to where it's succeeding. And if you're somebody who wants to stay in the lower third dimensional version and you're going to go through the death cycle, you're going to choose one of those. Sometimes they overlap just a bit. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll be on completely separate versions, but you're not going to know that. You're not going to perceive it until you start perceiving from the level of multidimensional perspective. Is there something that higher vibrational humans can do to, say, encourage those who are still living in lower vibrational fearful lives? There are several things. One is to know that if that is what they're choosing, that that is an appropriate choice. There's nothing wrong with that choice. It's a vibrational selection. All right? It doesn't mean it's wrong. 
doesn't mean that they are copping out. It doesn't mean that they are not part of source energy. They are also source energy, but they're choosing density. They're choosing not to go through the, um, the integrative process. And that is a valid choice. Hold no judgment there. But having said that, you can hold a vision for them. What you do is you're pulsing out a vibration and it makes it easier for them to tap into that vibration if they want, especially if they're coming from a place of density. The greatest thing that you can do for the planet is to work on yourself because you're holographic in nature. Remember, all your true power lies here. It's not outside yourself. So work on you. The more you connect with yourself, the more you connect with source energy, the more you connect with everyone and everything. One of the illusions that you all hold is that if uh, there's a huge fear here, the more I connect with myself and with source, I'm going to leave everybody else behind. All right, I'm going to leave everyone and everything that I know behind and I'm going to be alone. No, the more you connect with yourself, the more you connect with everyone else. You see the people who are vibrating at a lower rate you accept them for who they are. It doesn't mean that you spend every moment with them, that you share a complete and whole perspective of reality with them. But you see them as a soul making a valid choice and you are very connected. You can feel everything that they're feeling if you so choose. You are more connected the higher you go in frequency. But there is a fear that somehow you're going to leave your family and your friends behind and you connect more with them. That is the reality. All right. So do you all have any questions literally about uh, accessing the Akashic realms themselves? No. What's the direct, what's <laughs> the direct route? <laughs> well, the image, imagery that we've given you. And you just honestly, the intent to connect, it's not complicated. We want to make, make sure you get this. There is a belief on this planet that you've got to do ritual in order to raise your vibration. And that's not it. Ritual was originally established at a time when the vibration of the planet was much lower, when you were not moving through this band of this sector of space that is rich with high vibrational energy that was loving and supporting you. And so ritual was created in order to give people a pathway. You can think of it as climbing scaffolding. And at some point, if you want to get higher, you're going to have to leap off and fly. The ritual was there to create the structure to get you to a certain point. Most of you are already starting to where the top of the scaffolding goes. You have lifetimes of information about how to climb the scaffold. You don't have to start at the beginning and go through all the ritual. You just have to tap into the vibration and the frequency. And if you are tapping into your heart center, you're tapping into unconditional love, you are bypassing any of that ritual or that scaffolding. That is what all of that ritual was designed to do to get you connected to your heart center. It does not take you long to get there. All right, so we want to make sure this is put out there. We're going to upset a lot of people when they hear that you don't have to do ritual to get there because they are so ingrained in those lifetimes of struggle, of raising the vibration, that they don't see that this is just who you are. It's normal. It's natural. You already contain it all within you. You don't have to go through years and years of practice. You don't have to meditate for hours and hours. All you have to do is connect with your heart. So connect there. And then use the brain, the imagination, to create a scenario for yourself. And then trust in what you're getting, what you're seeing. Um, some of you may get visuals, some of you may hear, and some of you may just feel. It's easier for you to interpret vibrations in a particular way. You are literally hardwired, and so it's easier. It's like being left or right-handed. One's just easier or more natural than the other. It doesn't mean that you can't be ambidextrous. It doesn't mean that you can't develop these other skills and these other abilities. All right. Um, and it comes with trust, trusting in yourself, listening, and asking for confirmation. And it does get easier each time you do it. Don't worry if you feel foolish when you start. Or you say, I don't know what I'm really connecting to. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep asking for confirmation. You know, get it. We promise we won't let you down. It'll take a while before you start getting um, answers or being able to see clearly or sense clearly? It depends on each and every one of you, your fears, your fears about accessing the records, your fears about um, connecting 
your fears about uh, what happens if I access this. It depends on whether you have persecution issues. So if you go to connect and you feel anxiety, look and see, ask what that anxiety is. The reason I'm afraid to connect, the reason I'm not connecting is. My most negative thought that keeps me from connecting to the Akashic Realms is, and fill in the blank. My payoff for not connecting to the Akashic Realms is, fill in the blank. And as we said, you might have to say it five, six, seven times before something will pop in. Because you are resisting, and part of you does not want to know. But eventually something will come up, and it may not like, make logical sense. It may seem um, unrelated the trust that that is indeed what it is. All right? So uh, we've been going for about two hours now, so we should probably go ahead and wrap it up here. So know that you can call on us at any time. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need Wendy to channel for you. All you have to do is get yourself heart-centered, ask to connect, listen, trust what you get, ask for confirmation if in doubt, and we'll be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes, dears. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure.